Hello everybody, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Aurora 4X. Uh, today, uh, after completing overhaul of, or starting to complete overhaul of our explorers, we're going to be um, refitting them with, with our new uh, Magneto engines, which we have plenty of in our stockpile, right there. Um, so I'll be covering overhauling. Um, and we'll also start a construction of our missile boats. So let's get stuck into it. First and foremost, uh, Canberra 5 is going to be our first victim. Um, all we need to do is wait. Well, first of all, we need to wait for our shipyard to finish retooling. So we'll go ahead and just get that out of the way. And as soon as that's done. We'll start refilling. That should be uh, maybe five, ten more days now. Bingo, there we are. Okay, so in order to retool, you select a shipyard of the ship that's going to be building, or refit as the case may be. Select refit to. So here in the from section, you want to select the ship that is going to be um, uh, refitted to the new one. Um, so Melbourne is the one where we're refitting into our Grimsby class. Is it about Melbourne or Canberra? No, Canberra. I recognize the names. So we're refitting Canberra into Grimsby. And when you select your cl your class, it'll show you what ships are currently in or, uh, in the same location as those uh, as your shipyard um, that it can actually refit. Uh, if the class doesn't exist, then it won't be on the list. So, what ships do we have from our explorer fleet? So, Canberra Five is finished tooling, so we'll do that one first. There we go. So, Canberra. Five. So when you re when you refit, okay, you can hit refit details to get here. So let's see what it's going to do. So first of all, it's going to add in the 400 EP engine, which costs 100 build points. It's going to add 10 units of ceramic composite armor for 100 build points at 10 build points per item. It's going to add two improved geological sensors at 300 build points each and two improved gravitational sensors at 300 build points each. It's also going to add a large fuel storage, small crew quarter, tiny crew quarter, um, and that's it. Now, you'll also get an overhead cost, which is a percentage of the total build point of the components that you're adding, as well as a build point cost of um, what the difference is in the tonnage. I believe, I'm not sure if it only counts for size down or whether it's only size up, but there is a build point of size difference. So in order to reduce the, uh, the build cost, you want to reduce the total build point cost of the components that are changing and also um, a size difference. So if you can make them the same size, then that will make them uh, cost less. Now, the build point cost is the same regardless of, well, it should be the, uh, the same regardless of whether uh, you have it in stockpile or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually test that real quick. Um, and we can see here that the engine is only 100 build points. So that's going to be cheap, but the geological sensors, they're going to be a bit more expensive. So no, it looks like they're 100. So that's a summary, actually. So it looks as you can see that it adds up to 1046. So we've got 100, 200, um, 500, 800, 1000, and then a little bit spare. So 1046 is right there. So 600 build points worth of our build cost is just in the sensors. So if we go ahead and add in the improved sensors, here they are. Yes, yeah, so they're 150 each. So if we go ahead and build these improved sensors, that will reduce, yes, that will reduce how many, uh, how much build points we will have to spend 
on our exploration ships, which means we can overhaul them. We can, we, well, sorry, which means we can refit them a lot faster. So we'll go ahead and get those banged out. It's going to take a little while. We got. Oh, it's going to take us a while. So let's go and work on some of the other ones. So. I want to just go finish Sydney. Well, let's retool the other ones we've got. So, refit. So, Sydney is going to be upgrading our Sydneys into Sydney 2s. Now, we don't have any Sydneys in orbit, but let's see what we're working on composite armor and engines. So, the engines are going to be the big ones, but we already have them in stock, so it's just going to be um, bolting them in. So, that's not a big deal. Where is our Sydney at the moment? I believe it's our cargo, yes. Get over there. Okay. So we'll skip ahead and get Sydney done. There we go. So we shall upgrade the Sydney 2 into a Sydney 202. So we will add this. Now, it says here, refit cost is 98.6% of the cost of a new ship. Are you sure you wish to proceed? This will pretty much pop up any time that the build cost is higher than about, I think about 40% the cost of the ship or 50% the cost of a ship. Now, this is only in build points, okay? However, this 400 gala site, we won't have to spend it all because that 400 gallocyte has already been spent by industry to build the actual engine themselves. Um, the boronide, the neutronium, and the, and the, the uranium, you'll notice, are much, much less. If we go to construction of a new ship, we still have to pay the 400 gallocyte, but it's 205 uranium. We've got to pay macassium, boronide, and neutronium, and corbamide, whereas refitting is less neutronium and boronide, and we don't have to pay any macassium at all. Now, you will, of course, get some of these minerals back if you scrap the ship and build a new one, but you won't get all of them. So if you scrap and rebuild, you will have to spend at least some macassium um, and a little bit extras to get the new ship, because all we're paying for in terms of minerals is the armor, the engine, the fuel storage. That's it. That's the only parts that we're paying for in minerals. Um, the build points, it we're just paying for in time and wealth, and that's nothing, right? So even though the build points are much more, are almost as expensive as a new ship, the mineral cost is less. And either way, we're still going to get the ship out faster than we would um, with a standard ship. Um, and further, if you build a new ship, if you have a look, and construction is 725. Um, so we are saving, yeah, we're saving about 10 build points, so not much faster, but if you're making minimal changes, uh, it's going to be a lot less. So Sydney will refit, there we go, and Amphion, yes, we have an Amphion, what are the details? We're just bolting new engines in, swapping those out, so that's... Fantastic. So we're going to swap that. The uh, tug we haven't got yet, but we do have the Birmingham. Uh, yes, we have a Birmingham. Once again, we're just swapping the engines out. So that's going to be very, very cheap. 250 compared to 600. There we go. Uh, this one is spare, not doing any, anything. Uh, we're waiting for the survey scanners for the explorers, so they're staying as they are, and keep going. <clears throat> uh, 
Now, when you actually refit, one thing to note is that for military ships especially, um, the main, uh, refitting will rapidly reduce their maintenance clock. Um, so in, if you have a ship that is due for an overhaul, but you're going to refit it, it actually makes more sense to refit it instead of overhauling the ship at all. So doing the overhaul on the survey ships is less efficient than just doing the refit straight up. So what, that's one thing to keep in mind, which we'll have to monitor for next time. So there we go. Amphion 1 is now complete. And what's he? That's a cargo ship. Cargo ship? No. Survey? What is the Amphion? I keep forgetting. Oh, that's a salvage ship. Righto. <clears throat> two and two. Yep, yeah, so we'll have to crap it. So now that the overhaul is complete, then the default orders are going to complain. So there we go. All right. Birmingham should complete soon. There we go. Uh, we're still waiting for the river and the Melbourne to retool so we can get those refit. <clears throat> and also for the tug to retool as well. All right, improved geological sensors are going to be done soon as well. How many do we have we only have three and there are no right, this one uh, two each so we only actually need six so we'll get rid of this four that will have six of each sensor. We'll obviously have to build more later, but for now, we'll just get the six. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll start refitting as soon as that, as soon as we've built the first two of this. But the river two is done. Down the jump point in Rockhampton. So we do still have some surveyors running around as well. Okay, do we have two of each? Proved geological grub. Nope, not yet. And now we have two of each. All right, so now we go to Grimsby. Select our Camera, yep, we got the right one. So a new one will take 1200 and a refit will take 1046. So again, we've got a fair amount of components that need to be refit, so we'll go ahead and re and start work. There is one other very important thing to remember with a refit compared to scrapping. Uh, especially when with military ships, is that when you scrap it, any grade bonus that you've racked up or task force training bonus that you've racked up will disappear. It's gone. Um, whereas if you refit, it does preserve the grade bonus and the task force training. So um, there are definitely major benefits to refitting over uh, scrapping and rebuilding. Uh, especially with military. Okay. 
All right, we have our warships retooled. Time to start swapping them over. So Melbourne to Melbourne 2. What do you need? So we need magneto engines, a fair amount of magneto engines. Because we're reworking the fuel storage as well, that's going to be um, a little bit expensive. But the magneto engines are the most expensive piece. So it is especially important that we ensure that we have enough magneto engines to retool all of our ships. So Melbourne and River. River is pretty cheap for a refit, which is excellent. There we go. All right, so we've got a spare lab. Uh, put it into salvage module so we can get our salvager retold. Uh, overhauls because we've uh, because we're refitting them. And Sydney's already done. Well, we've already got them, so that's fine. So that's nicely chugging along. Um, yeah, we've still got plenty of engines to go. Okay, we got civilian economy, another 20%, which is wonderful because we kind of need it. And construction rate is now going up, which is great. And TG2. Three needs to have it cleared. All right, so this one's refitting. How far off is it? Uh, not too bad. All right, so let's have a quick squeeze at our missile boats before we do. Is it Collins? No, Collins is construction. Perry is a terraformer. No, I don't think we've actually done a missile boat yet. No, we haven't. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this one to Destroyer Escort because Destroyer Escort will have a slightly different uh, tag, so it'll make it a little bit clearer to recognize them. Um, this one is a Destroyer, so uh, it's, that's got the lasers on it. So now we're going to copy our regular Destroyer. Uh, let's go with something better. Waller. Mm. Sheehan? Yeah, I like Sheehan. Um, and we're going to set it as a missile destroyer. I mean, the nomenclature is wrong, but whatever. And let's strip out these engines, fire controls, ECMs. Uh, do we have better damage control? I don't think we do yet. No, that's fine. Um... I'm not sure if we should keep the search sensor. With the amount of ships that we're getting in our fleet, it might be better off to eventually split the search sensors into um, their own ships. But for now, no, we need a better sensor. Yeah, we're going to need a better sensor. Uh, we're going to build a sensor ship as well, I think, uh, at the moment, which means we are going to need a new shipyard. Yeah, let's whip up a new naval shipyard.
Naval Shipyard Complex. That one's going to take a while to tool up, but we should be able to make a fairly small one, so we don't necessarily have to make it 16 kilotons. But, missiles. New armor. Yep, got the best armor. Cool. So, first thing we need is we need a missile fire control. Where's our missile fire control? Do we have one yet? No, I don't think we do. Okay, so I think we're still missing a few components, but first and foremost, all right, 10 launches will cost us about 2,000 tons. Hmm, I'm concerned about the tonnage. Okay, let's strip it to bare bones. Okay, so that's bare bones. So first and foremost, let's put 15 launches on it. And we are going to need our missile fire control. But first we need our arrows. So um, when you add launchers to a missile boat, each launcher automatically provides its size worth of storage capacity um, worth a magazine, right? So you will always have a little bit extra storage just because of your launchers themselves. Uh, because obviously, you know, you can build a ship, put a missile on the launcher, and then send it on its way. It can't reload, but you can still load it. Um, it's, it's, it's what allows you to um, effectively use box launchers. Without that mechanism, box launchers wouldn't work. So you've got a little bit of storage from your launches. Now, we have on our arrow a range of 139 million kilometers. Now, we want about 200 million kilometers on our fire control. So, we'll go up to 7,000 tons, and we have 81 million kilometers on it, so we'll increase size. You know what, let's future-proof it. We'll go to 300. It's 325. It's only size 4. It's not that big. And we only really need one, so that will be fine. So we'll create that. Now, we don't have a uh, anti-missile one as well, so we'll do anti-missile as well. Uh, anti-missile, anti-fighter. So you need one hull size for your missile tracking, all right? Because you need to be able to spot those missiles and get them out. What's the range on our AMMs? It's only 1.1 kilometer, so we'll need only about 5 million kilometers range. There we go. 5 million kilometers, well, 5 and a bit million kilometers range on a size 6 missile. Um, a size 6 missile is the lowest you can get. Um, you can, of course, get missiles smaller than that, but they don't gain any advantage to detection. So as you can see a size 1 and a size 6 missile at the exact same distance using active sensors. So this is going to be a little bit larger for the fire control, so we can get those missiles out there. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll add 48 slash 5.2. So um, it's important to keep uh, track of your um, size 6 range because your 48 is your 50 ton object, uh, which is obviously a lot further than your um, size 6 missile. And if anything, I'll actually 5.2. So we know that it's resolution 1. So there we go. All right. And um, for 50. This same fire controller will let you shoot at fighters up to 50 million kilometers out, so you've got no problems um, with that. So we have our point defense, our AMM, and anti-ship missile fire controls. Now we need some sensors to go with it. Um, as uh, River, what sensor do you have? You've got only got a anti-missile sensor um, and a very small one at that. Um, Melbourne only has five, six million kilometers. So very small sensors, we need better ones. So now we switch to search sensor. 
and we'll get it up back up to 120 for 6,000 ton object. And this time we're going to make it substantially bigger because we need to be able to see those ships from far away enough that we can actually still shoot at them. So I'm going to set it to 500 million. That is a nice uh, round 20. And then we'll give it a 1,000 ton sensor. So that one. It's also good, pretty decent future proofing because if our missile range goes up, we'll be able to see the ships from further out. And also we will need our size one anti-missile sensor. And that one will also... Uh, now this one is where it gets interesting. Or at least it would if a certain technology worked. So with point defense, right? Uh, where is it? Here it is. Okay. Max tracking time bonus versus missiles. So I believe I mentioned this, but the way it's supposed to work, right, is that when you have, um, I'll show you. So let's say you've got a missile speed of 200,000 kilometers a second, okay? Or 200,000. And you've got a tracking speed on your turrets or guns or whatever of 50,000. Okay? So you're... Now, when you try and fire at those missiles using that tracking speed, you will take an accuracy penalty. Okay? And the penalty takes is this divided by this. No. Other way around. Uh, come on, mouse. Okay. So that's your penalty. All right. So if you try and shoot a 20,000 kilometer second missile with a 50,000 tracking speed, you will only get 25% of your actual accuracy. All right. Um, then that's factored in by crew grade and range and all of that stuff. But at its absolute base, your accuracy will be 25%. All right. What tracking speed does is it counters, or at least it's supposed to counter this accuracy by 2% for every five seconds that you have a missile on active sensors. All right. So if for this missile to negate this accuracy penalty, you have to raise your accuracy by 0.75 by 75% in two second increments. Okay, so that will get it up to 150 and need to multiply that by five because five seconds. Hang on. No, you halve it. You halve it. So because it's 2%, we could get 2%, not 1%. So that is in seconds. And then you multiply the whole lot by five because you get it every five seconds. So there you go. So 187 and a half seconds is what you need to negate this penalty. All right. Uh, at which point you go that divided by that and there you go. So all you need is about a million kilometers. Yeah, about, about a million kilometers. So if you can see this missile from a million kilometers out, you can still hit it with 100% base accuracy using your 50,000 tracking speed. Sounds fantastic, right? What, what this basically means is that if somebody's shooting at you from 30, 40, 50, 100 million kilometers out, your tracking speed can be nice and low, and you can negate that penalty. Now, obviously, um, they will only give you a tracking bonus equal to your to your research level, but you can get this up to 100% research, which means that you can completely negate any penalty that you would normally get. So, for example, with our 40% research, that would only let you get up to 40%, um, which means that you'll get 65% maximum accuracy. So, yeah, it sounds fantastic, except... It's broken. Not sure why, but for some reason, 
this tracking bonus, discovered this the other day, this tracking bonus is completely ignored by the accuracy calculation. Um, so, that what that what, what, the, what does that mean for you? It means that your point defenses are essentially useless unless they are in absolute storm mode. Um, if the missile is is track is moving faster than your tracking speed, you're going to be in a lot of trouble unless you have a lot of projectiles. And because of the way the tracking speed attack and engine tech increases, um, your missiles are going to be able to to be a lot faster than your tracking speed pretty much all the time. I mean, looking at ours, right? Um, the arrow, it's already doing 16,000. It's already doing, and this is suboptimal as well, right? You can get this thing at least twice as fast. It's already doing faster than our tracking speed can track it, right? It's only 300 kilometers, but it's still doing faster than tracking speed can track it. If you make an optimal missile, you can get this thing up to easily 25, 30,000 kilometers, and then they're not going to be able to track it. All right, half of your missiles will get through just an accuracy alone. So it's very easy to make a missile that your tracking speed can't do. So AMMs are realistically your best bet against missiles. I forgot where I was where I was going with this. Um, right. Anyway, what are we doing? Um, right, so detection, right? Because tracking bonus is completely broken, our detection only has to see the missiles as far out as our fire control can actually shoot at them, all right? So at the moment, we only have 5 million kilometers. Was it 5, was it five million? Uh, it is... <clears throat> 5.2. So we only need to be able to spot those missiles from 5, kilo, 5 million kilometers out. The 2.1 won't, won't matter. Size 20. So that's another 1,000 tons, 2,000 tons worth of sensors. And we have ourselves a fantastic screen, uh, sensor screen, uh, to pretty much see anything that comes our way. So you cancel that and give us some sensors. So, fire control, fire control, sensor, and sensor. Uh, and then work on something that's going to be a little more useful, like, say, more, more sensitivity would be nice. Okay. So we're going to need those fire controls before we can build our missile boats. So let's get those out first. <clears throat> How are we doing on time? Ooh, we're already over. Um, that's fine. I'm finding the half an hour episodes are perhaps a little bit on the short side. So I'm thinking about upping the uh, standard episode time up to about maybe 45 minutes. Um, that way it'll let me get my little uh, talks about various mechanics and systems out as well, and get us let us get a little bit more done. Uh, looks like Mars is done as well. Our geological survey. How are we doing on Mars? Um, doesn't look like we found anything. No, nothing. Okay. Jake Reed, you have failed us. <clears throat> so, but at the very least, they found some decent sorium on Luna and a little bit of geranium, which is nice. Um, do we have a survey on this? No. Uh, let's see what, what else we can get. So we're going to get our tug. We're going to go to Mars. Once we find it. There it is. We're gonna pick up the team. Actually, this one has a lot of engines. Let's send our, our freighter instead. It's a little bit slower, but get the job done. And it's got the range for it without burning through a lot of fuel. So pick up team. And where are we sending him to UX, was it? UX25, yes. 
UX25 dropout team. Cool. All right, so first fire control is a little bit out. <clears throat> There we go, first missile, first launch, uh, fire control is ready. Now we get our missile, and now, we don't actually need a missile fire control on this one because we are only making it for offensive purposes right now. Hmm. I actually think about getting um, both systems in, depending on how we do. Uh, do we have a magazine? We do not have a magazine. We need a magazine. So in order to carry missiles, you need um, some magazines. All right. Um, actually, let me just double check that I haven't actually made one yet and just forgotten about it. No, I haven't. Okay. So magazines. All right. Feed system efficiency is how much of the magazine is comprised of systems that will take and move missiles around and then load them into your launchers. Uh, obviously, the higher the efficiency, the less, uh, the more missiles you can fit in the space, because if you use less space for the feed system, you have more space for missiles. Ejection system doesn't take any mass or anything at all, but it uh, flat decreases uh, the explosion chance by increasing the chance for the ammunition to be ejected from the ship if the magazine with, uh, takes uh, lethal damage. Now, armor, um, like ships, it does improve how much tonnage uh, each hit to kill um, uses, right? So, if you increase the hit to kill, the amount of armor that is actually consumed, uh, the amount of space that is consumed by the armor, does improve as your armor tech improves. However, this drop down is completely redundant because it doesn't actually let you select um, weaker armor. So it will automatically select the best and it will alt auto always use the best, just like your ships. Uh, it will always use the best and it, even though you can select it, it doesn't make any difference. So. Uh, wait, as your armor improves, you'll notice that the amount of armor that is actually used does improve. However, um, you can't, it, it doesn't change with the drop down. It automatically uses select the best one. So we do want a little bit of extra hit to kill for your magazines. Um, so four, um, I think I have talked about hit to kill before, but I'm not going to talk about it again right now. So we are going to use, um, there is a very, very nice tool. Uh, not on the map, not on... This one, calculations, loadout calculation. Here we go. So if you take your arrow, all right, and there we go, magazine space and quantity. So um, we have 15 launches at the moment, okay? So 15, and we need magazine space of 90. But we already have that from the launches, right? So how much do we need to carry what we want? Okay, so um, let's say we want 10 salvos. Okay, we want to be able to launch 10 salvos, 150. Okay, and we also, now if we want to, so that means we need 900 magazine space. All right, so if we now go to our magazine, um, 306, that's not bad. That gives us three magazines. If one's destroyed, um, then we have two more left. So three, ma three of these magazines will easily um, load up 10 salvos worth of arrows. Okay, so let's say we now want some, uh, we want to dual purpose it with AMMs, right? How many AMMs do we need? Well, our AMMs are not, incredibly fantastic so we're probably going to use two to one um enemy ships can usually throw out about 100 so we're going to need let's say 300 so that'll give us another 13 300 so we need 1200 magazine space so we have a 300 magazine already so what we can do is we can put four of these on a ship load three of them with arrows 
and three of them with AMM-1s. That's not bad for a dual purpose ship. So I think that is what we are going to do. Um, what we can actually do, we can up the hit to kill to five, make it a little bit more tougher and get exactly 300. And that is going to be absolutely fantastic. So let's do that. Very handy this. Um, so we'll get rid of that. We'll close that down. And we will need to go ahead and do some research on that. That should be in missiles. There it is. How's this guy doing? He's way out. Get him to build, get him to design the magazine first. There we go. Do we need anything else? Nope, that's fine. Keep working on the reduced size launcher once he's ready because we want that box launcher if we're going to be uh, able to if we want to use any kind of fighters or anything like that okay so magazine is on the way the other fire controllers on the way as well they're going to be not too far apart i think i'll strip one of these and put it on this one uh, what have we got? Team skill is up. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> 20, 27th of May. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Team dropped off. Excellent. Refit complete for Grimsby. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and refit the next Canberra. Do we have enough engines? Yes, we do. We can actually do both. There we go. And I believe that's used up. No, nope, they still got plenty. What are the details? Ah, oh, because they're only one engine. Only one engine. Right, because of the jump drive. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> Alright, so we'll keep working on our magazine and our fire control. And what I'll do is I'll actually send off our refitted explorer. Once I find him, there he is. Yep. Um, there we go. Um, I'll send off the next explorer and we'll go, well, exploring. Where are we going to send them? Uh, let's send them out through Rocky. So, where's Rockhampton? Rockhampton, there it is. I'm going to send them out through this one to do a GS survey. <clears throat> okay. We'll keep working on this. Eventually, we'll get, we'll get better jump drive for the explorers, but um, I tend to use explorers as sacrificial lambs. Um, they detect enemies by getting shot at, so the less mass they are, the less waste when they do eventually get destroyed. Um, alternatively, because they are military ships, because they're dual purpose, um, I could probably just give them a couple of guns or at least a little bit of point defense, um, and that will help them survive. But that's tonnage that um, is really not worth it at the moment. So uh, that's a river done, so we'll refit the next river. There we are. <clears throat> All right, magazine is done. Fire controller will be done in a second. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. So we need this fire control, which is 200 tons. 
Okay. And we need three of these for our arrows. All right, and that is a 7,600 ton destro um, missile destroyer. So what kind of speed can we get it using just our missile control? So first of all, we're going to need some ECMs and ECCMs to compete. There we go. Uh, we are going to want... Uh, sensors, of course, will be on a different boat entirely. Because they're too massive at the moment. Uh, so we are going to want... Okay, we're going to need two of these engines. We don't necessarily have to get it too fast because it's going to sit in the back and shoot the missiles from long range. So it doesn't have to be able to outrun anything. It just needs to be able to keep its distance long enough for the missiles to destroy them. So <clears throat> there we go. Million tons, engineering spaces. So it doesn't break down two seconds out. Uh, don't need that many. So we've got enough to repair our largest component twice, and we got a good amount of maintenance. So we've got 7,000 kilometers, and it's still under a 16 kiloton, which means that we can't actually build it. So I think what I might do... Hmm. How much would it take to get it into a dual purpose. So we'll do a copy so that we don't mess around with it. So if we do two of these, so 20 AMMs will be enough. They fire pretty quick anyway. Um, we'll need a res 1 fire control for AMM purposes. And we're going to need an extra magazine. So that's not that bad, actually. That is actually pretty decent. Hmm. If we get down to three armor rating, because, you know, it's... It's not going to be taking shots, ideally. If we get it down to 3 armor, we can get it around 16,750. Mm. Uh, no, we're going to need more. Okay. So, fuel storage. Get another one. Because we want that extra range. Oh, we accidentally added 5 of them. There we go. Um, <clears throat> not thinking, do I want an extra engine? It'll get us up to 8,000, but it'll take us up to 20,000. That's a little bit much. Let's stick to two. 6,000 is still enough to maintain range against uh, most hostiles will come across. Not all, but most. Um, they'll still be able to catch us, but we'll be able to give them a good run. So, yes. I am pleased with this design. Brilliant. Okay, we have ourselves a dual-purpose missile boat. I like this one more. Don't necessarily, don't necessarily care about this one. So we'll go ahead and yes, we will delete this one because we don't not need it. We'll get rid of the copy and now we need to get ourselves a little bit extra tonnage. All right, so um, I shall take a break.
put a cut in this episode and in the next one we will continue and actually start getting constructed. See you all next time.